Hi, my name is Mike Merchant. I'm entomologist for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, and we're here today to talk about controlling the crepe myrtle bark scale. Crepe myrtle bark scale is a relatively new pest on crepe myrtles in the U.S. Um, it's an insect that feeds on the sap of the crepe myrtle tree, those beautiful flowered trees in your backyard. They uh, pose a problem two ways. They turn the, the trunks a dark color uh, black from their excrement, and then they also will reduce blooming. Although you might not be able to tell this on any given tree, um, the, the blooms do decrease when they're heavily in, when the trees are heavily infested. So what's the solution? Well, we're going to talk about two things that you can do, two practical things that you can do to reduce bark scale on your crepe, crepe myrtle trees. First of all, we're going to wash the tree. We're going to take some of that black sooty mold off, and then we're going to treat the tree with an insecticide that uh, stays within the tree and kills the scale. So let's, uh, let's talk about bark washing first. So we've got some soap here. We've got a couple of gallons of water in our bucket. That's all it takes. Uh, we should put, uh, for two gallons of water, we should put several tablespoons of soap. The exact amounts are, are not critical, but you want to uh, put enough to, to clean the tree with. So we got a little squirt of soap in there. And we're going to need a soft bristle brush to brush down the trunk of the tree. Now I'm going to take this brush off because the tree is fairly short. Uh, you may need a pole to, to treat your tree. We're going to make this water nice and soapy. And we're just going to wash the tree with it. Now when you're cleaning, you don't have to really worry about breaking off loose bark. That's part of crepe myrtles. It, it will grow right back. But you do want to try to get uh, your soapy water into the cracks and crevices on the trunk. Okay, now for the insecticide treatment. Uh, we, we have been working with crepe myrtle bark scale at Texas A&M AgriLife for several years, and we found some products that work pretty well in the home landscape. Uh, the one we're going to be using today has a tongue twisting name. It's called imidacloprid. Imidacloprid is found in, a, in a several different commercial products, but it's uh, commonly sold under the Bayer trade name, Bayer Advanced 12 Month Tree and Shove Protect and Feed, or something sim very similar to that. Um, this product is a systemic insecticide, which means it's taken up by the roots of the tree. It has just enough water solubility that the roots will absorb it and take the insecticide up through the trunk and into the leaves where the scale, leaves and twigs where the scales are feeding. So this is one product. Another active ingredient that you might find in your local uh, garden center, hardware store, or other place where insecticides are sold is uh, dinotefuran. Dinotefuran is the active ingredient in products labeled with the name Safari. You may find other trade names also, but uh, imidacloprid and dinotefuran are two very good products available over the counter that you can use to treat this tree with. Now, one of the first things we have to do if we're going to use an insecticide is we have to follow the label. So we want to make sure that we read the label on these products carefully. So according to the label, this is an appropriate product to use on a tree. However, it should be used only on trees and plants that are not in bloom. And the reason for that is these insecticides are th thought to have a possibility of killing bees if the bees are feeding on the nectar that's, that's being affected by the sprays. So this tree does not have blooms on it, so this is a legal tree to use this on. Um, if you have a, a crepe myrtle that's in bloom, you're going to have to apply this earlier in the season before the flowers come out or later in the season when there's not very many flowers. Uh, now this this label gives instructions for treating the tree based on the trunk diameter or on the shrub height. And we're going to go by shrub height because this tree has a lot of trunks and it makes it difficult to calculate how much you need and it probably would overestimate the amount of insecticide that you need. So we're going to use the, trump, the shrub height option on this label and it says measure the height of the shrub to the nearest foot multiply the number of feet by three, and that's the number of ounces of product you need to apply to this uh, tree. So, 
Let's, let's measure the tree and see how tall it is. Okay, you may not have a fancy measuring stick like this, but you can usually approximate the height of a shrub by looking at someone standing next to it. In my case, I'm about five foot nine, and this tree is about twice as tall as I am. We confirm that by looking at the measuring stick, which shows that it's about 11, 10 to 11 feet in height. So that's what we're gonna to use to measure our insecticide out with. So, now we're ready to mix up our insecticide. We know that it takes about three ounces of the insecticide itself per foot of shrub height. We have a 10 to 11 foot tree. And guess what? When you do that, the math comes out to about 32, 33 fluid ounces. This package happens to be 32 fluid ounces. So this, this jug will treat a tree this size, about 10 feet. Now that's one of the reasons you want to read the label before you go to the store, because you want to make sure you're buying enough product to treat the trees that you've got. And uh, that's a lot of insecticide, but um, it should give us good control for this year and maybe into next year. So, you're going to need uh, a measuring device like this, and we're going to pour this insecticide into the device, to the cup, and the cup's 32 ounces, you can see that's how much is in the, in the product. Now, we're going to pour this into the water, and this is an interesting product in that it really does it, the label does not tell you how much water to use on a tree. Basically, you need to use enough water to get the insecticide down into the roots. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this in three gallons of water because I think that's enough. Three to four gallons of water is enough to treat the soil around the base of this tree. But I could use five gallons of water. I could use one and a half gallons of water. It doesn't really matter uh, according to this label. You always want to rinse your insecticide measuring device into your, into your spray water. That way you don't have to rinse it out in the sink or anything like that. And never put your hose into the insecticide solution while it's filling up. It'll contaminate the hose and um, it could result in backflow. So I told you this was going to be easy. All we have to do now, we've got our, our 32 ounces of insecticide mixed up in four gallons of water. All we have to do is drench around the base of the tree. No need to go out to the drip line. Crepe myrtle roots absorb nutrients and water right around the base of the tree. You might want to avoid doing this after a heavy rain because that could limit the soil's ability to take up water. But that's all it takes to treat this tree. And our research has shown that the treatment like this can last up to two seasons for protecting a tree from crepe myrtle scale. So thanks for watching this video. If you have more questions about crepe myrtle bark scale or any other type of insect pest problem in your garden, you can go to our website at citybugs, C-I-T-Y-B-U-G-S dot T-A-M-U dot E-D-U. We look forward to seeing you there.